All right, so here we are. Uh, <laughs> so I've been wanting to record a video on how to record Rocket League cinematics for quite a while because it's something that I've been really passionate about. I've been really into, It's it's been really fun for me. It's been a really big hobby for me. And, and if I can show you all how to do it, then you guys can get the same joy that I've been getting from it. And that's kind of the goal, you know? Before we go any further, please make sure you like this video and you subscribe to the channel because you can get more content like this sometime in the future. And I also post other content like, you know, gameplay and tutorial, other tutorials and stuff like that. So if I were you, I'd be sure to stay to the very end of this video because throughout this video, there's going to be a lot of key points that you can implement on any of your projects. So I would highly recommend staying to the end of this video. So I'm going to be showing people that are on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC how to record cinematics. Now there's going to be a different method for the consoles and for the PC, but they're kind of similar in some ways. It might be a little more difficult for the console players to do, but it's still very doable. And I get a lot of questions from you guys asking me how you guys can record a cinematic if you guys are on console, so, so I would just rather answer all your questions here today right now. But anyway, I'm being a little too long-winded, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the video right now. So the first thing you're, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your extras, replays, and you're going to want to find a replay that you want to use. I'm just going to use this one right here, the, the ground the double tap that I saved. Always remember to save your replays, whether you're on console or PC, because then you can go into the replay and this is how you get the cinematics to record. This is also how you get rid of the HUD, being like the, um, let's say you're in, uh, let's say you're in car cam and you have the, uh, this is also how you get rid of the HUD being the uh, being the scoreboard and the boost and also right here the nameplates. That's how you delete all of those. Essentially this is how you make it more of a professional look. So once you're in the replay what you want to do, so this is my perspective right here and what you want to do right when you get into the replay is you want to find where the clip is. So I'm scrolling over right now I'm going to find where my clip is and uh, this is this was my clip right here. Um, it, was, it was okay I'm not a too good of a player but it's okay. So essentially for consoles and PC, this is gonna all be the same up to a certain point. Then after that, it's gonna start getting a little different when it comes to recording the cinematics. So what I would recommend if you're on console or PC, does not matter, is to screen capture the clip without the HUD on. So basically turning all these things off. I'm on uh, Xbox controller, so I hit B to deselect all of those. And then you just, uh, however you screen capture, you just screen capture this. Um, you can do it in full speed. I tend to do it in 25 to 50% speed or 50 to 25 percent speed that way I can slow it down and uh, do something that I'll show you later so after you get that recorded what you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to go to the fly mode so on the bottom of my screen you can see I'm in fly cam and that's how you uh, that's this is how you record cinematics so I'm gonna show how to do the console version first now the consoles are kind of limited on what they can do because they cannot set a path that you can set on PC to get a smooth cinematic so if you're on console, you'll probably probably want to record on 5 to 10% speed, which I'm holding down the A button to select the speed that I want to record in. So if you're on console, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get a smooth cinematic. And uh, somebody once told me that um, record the path where you would take a picture. So let me see, you might maybe like zoom in, zoom in a little bit. This is a kind of awkward angle, but either way. So this is what you would do. You'd probably want to try to get it very smooth. Just hold the joystick in one direction and just go one direction. That'd probably be your best bet. It's just to go in one direction so that way it'll all look smooth. Kind of like I'm doing right here. I'm not using any external, I'm not using any external plugins or anything to, uh, to move my joystick to the right or left. This is all I'm doing or up or down. Or you know, hold the triggers, go up or down. Usually what you want to do is just get a, a one solid cinematic like this. So, kind of like move with the car like this. To get as smooth of a cinematic as you want, as you can. So that's what you're gonna wanna do on console. It's, it's very basic, it's very easy to do. You just gotta have still fingers to be able to move your joysticks or your triggers to move the camera. And other than that, that's really how you do it. So I'll just like, uh, I'll record something real quick. Okay, so here's the, here's the beginning of the clip. These little things right here are uh, things, uh, deforms and replays that the boost path to sleep, so don't worry about those. Hey guys, just want to pause the video again. Just want to let you know that this thing right here, 
these little, this little glowing thing right here. This is something that like certain boosts or, or rocket trail paths or st something that your car ex exports, sometimes it'll leave it in the replay. So in order to get rid of it, just go to change replay, click on the replay that you are currently editing in. If you have a path laid down, your path will still be there. So if you have the dolly cam activated, just, so just roll out the footage until the game time gets to where your recording path is and then uh, just hit play and it should be just fine. So what I plan on doing for this is since I'm not using dolly cam or anything to record a path, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move really slow and zoom out so I can see everything and kind of get a cool camera angle. So this looks like a relatively cool camera angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm on 10% speed right now and I'm gonna hit play and I'm just gonna move my joystick forward. So essentially that's kind of what it's going to be, I mean, I don't typically do this anymore, I don't typically do this at all, so you'll just have to get used to moving the joystick very smoothly, uh, you'll, you'll adapt to it the longer you do it, but what I'm about to show you on PC is a whole nother level. Hey, I'm here for another interruption. So if you're on PC, before you start recording, if you want to, you can go to Google and type in at the top bar, reshade, hit enter and it should be the first link that comes up right here and hit download. So how you use Reshade is once you're in Rocket League, you just hit the home button on your keyboard and it'll pop this up. Now, if you're just downloading it, it'll probably have a little tutorial section that you can do. You can do the tutorial if you want to, uh, but if, if not, you can just come here and you can just like, you know, click on some of these random things right here. Uh, they all do something different, so you might just wanna mess around with it and play with it. Uh, I don't really necessarily have a tutorial, but you can just like, you know, they can do a lot, a lot of cool stuff. And I, I always use Reshade in every one of my montages now. So, uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. So, essentially, it's the same thing you want to do on console. You want to remove the HUD and go into your player view and record this path just like this. And you can also reduce the speed for time remapping later. Um, so, just like this, just record this as well. And a boom. So, once you get that recorded, then you can start going into Dolly Cam. So, essentially, what Dolly Cam is, is if you have Bacchus mod installed, if you don't have Bacchus mod installed, I'll link it down in the description. It's very easy to, it's very easy to download. You just click download and then restart Rocket League and it's in the game. So once you're in your replay, you'll hit F6 on your keyboard. That's the default and it'll bring up this window, the Bacchus mod console. And there's a few commands that you're going to want to know before you get started. I will put them down in the description uh, for you to reference back to later. But the first thing you're going to type in is EXEC space dolly cam and then hit enter. Now that loads up Dolly Cam for it to activate. The next thing you're going to want to type in is Dolly underscore interp mode space 5. What Dolly interp mode 5 does is when you are placing down your points that I'm going to show you here in a second, the blue line that you'll see also here in a second will go through those camera points that you place. Uh, Dolly, inter Dolly interp mode 1 does not do that. It takes the average of all your points and it's kind of frustrating to work with. Um, I usually only use Dolly Insert Mode 5, but every now and then I have to use Insert Mode 3 for shorter clips. The last thing you're going to want to type in is Dolly underscore Spline underscore ACC space 5000. So I'm pretty sure I know what this does. It essentially smooths out the camera as it travels through the tracking points to make the camera look a little more smooth. And after you have all of those typed in, then you are good to go. You can just hit Escape on your keyboard or you can go up to the top right hand corner of the screen and hit the X button but if you're not paused it'll wiggle around like this <laughs> so I usually just hit escape on my keyboard and now you're ready to record your cinematic path now I would always recommend when you're beginning to record your cinematic path always record it in 25 or 10 percent speed so that way you can get the proper place points so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, let's see it, this is all personal preference right here of where you want your camera points to be but for all intents and purposes I'll just do um, I'll do something very basic. So I don't know what it is for a keyboard, but I know I, I do my cinematics on controller. So I hit up on the D-pad. So I hit up on the D-pad to place a point and I just place a tracking point. I'll hit play and I'll hit pause about the same distance away. Um, I might move my camera right here. I might zoom out a little bit and I'll place up on my D-pad again to place another tracking point. And I'll go forward a little bit more. And now I might give my camera a little zoom in. I might uh, tilt my camera a little bit to give, uh, to give it a little angle by holding the right bumper and the camera, or, or the right analog stick to move like this together. And I'll place another point right there with up on the D-pad. And I'll go again. I might, for this specific cinematic, I might zoom out a little bit, 
You can tilt the camera back to center a little bit. Up on the D-pad, a little bit more forward. Maybe zoom in one more time. Up on the D-pad, as I jump, I might move my camera up with the, the right, right and left uh, triggers are how you move up and down. I might tilt my camera the other way. Maybe get in the frame a little bit. Up on the D-pad. Might move the camera up again a little bit. Tilt the camera just a little bit more again. Up on the D-pad. And this is where I would typically end a cinematic. Maybe just like place another couple points for blending. And now that's done. See, you don't see anything right now. But if you hit zero or O on your keyboard, it'll bring up this path. So these little red points are the points that I placed when I hit up on the D-pad. And the blue line is the uh, camera path. So this is a very smooth camera path. If you happen to see a very sharp camera path, you might want to um, delete the path and record or uh, replace the points again. So now that that is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit left on my D-pad to backtrack, to go back. And you can see this little red line, that's where the camera currently is. So uh, you just want to get that red line all the way back to the beginning to where you can't see it. So it's right at the beginning and then I'll go back one more and now it is good. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to hit F6 on your keyboard to bring up the console again. And you're going to want to hit Dolly underscore activate. This will activate the camera path as soon as it starts going through the path. So I'll hit enter and I'll hit escape to close out and then I'm gonna hit O again on my keyboard to close out the, uh, to get rid of that path so I can't see it. And now I'll hit play and watch it go through. Now I'm playing it through slow. This is exactly what I would do. Um, I, would, I would record it slow right here, how the camera is dipping down into the uh, into the floor. I would actually want to delete this and record it again, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna keep rolling out. I'll show you how to delete in just a second. All right, so that's what was, that was right here was the end of my path. So if I hit on, or zero, uh, I say on, if I hit O on my keyboard, bring up the path, uh, the path is now done. So now I have recorded my path. I would now stop my recording and then go to my video editing software. But I'm going to record one more cinematic, so that way I can show you what to do. Hit F6 on your keyboard again. To this, So right now we're going to delete that path. So first we want to deactivate the path. So it's dolly underscore deactivate. And now the path is deactivated. Now my camera will not move through that path. And now I want to get rid of the path, so I'm going to type in dolly underscore path underscore clear and that will uh, delete the entire path, so if you want to record something else, you can record another path. So now I'm going to record my next path. So my next path, uh, again, it's all personal preference on how you want to record your cinematics. It's all up to you, uh, your personal taste. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward it a little bit until right when I, before I hit the ball. And um, my path is all, everything is off, so now that I've cleared my path, it's deactivated again, I can now begin to place my points again. So I'll, I'll place a point right here. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to record the cinematic path and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've went ahead and I've recorded my, my cinematic path. I'm going to go back and make sure that my blue line is smooth everywhere, no sharp edges. It's kind of jittery right here, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and play it through though and see if it looks good or not, see if I, uh, I can deal with it. Likely right here where it's at, it's after the goal explosion and I'm going to cut the clip there right before the ball goes and explodes in the goal anyway, so it won't matter if that is not smooth right there. So let's go ahead and play it through, give me just one sec. Alright, so that looked pretty smooth, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my footage and I'm going to go put it in my video editor. So 
So if you're on console and you don't have access to a video editor like I'm about to use right here, you can actually download a video editor app on your phone. I mean, there's plenty of apps out there that you can use to edit your clips on. You'll just have to find a way to get your clips from your console onto your PC, but there are plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to do that. If you don't have access to things like the PC players have, like Reshade or any other kind of video editor effects, then you can find a video editor that has filters that you can use or effects that you can use. There's plenty of free apps out there that you don't have to pay for, but there are also apps you can pay for that will give you a lot more effects and a lot more color filters. So for this specific tutorial, I will be using Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. Let's go ahead and hop into it. So here I am right now in my video editor. I just dragged my clips in here and I actually did go ahead and re-record my cinematics. First of all, I wasn't too happy with how they turned out. And also I use reshade with them. So you'll be able to see what my filters look like. So what you're gonna wanna do, and I'll show you this just for one clip, is you're gonna want to go to the beginning of where your clip starts. So my clip, it starts, it starts right here. It starts right here, but since this cinematic, I wanna use it as well. It dips down into the floor right here. I don't want that to be in my cinematic. So I'm just gonna fast forward right past where the floor, see how it's like still right here. I'll fast forward a little bit and right there is where I'll start my cinematic. So what you wanna do is you just wanna drag your clip, trim off the beginning of it. And then you wanna do the same thing for the end of it. So uh, when you see the camera stop moving, Right there, see how the camera stopped moving? You're gonna wanna cut the cinematic right when it stops moving so you have the full, so about right here is fine. So I will go ahead and I'll trim that off and now I have this cinematic. So I'll go ahead and what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other two and I'll be right back. Oh yeah, one quick thing as well. I also added a goal explosion to this right here, as you can see. You'll see it better in After Effects when I pull it in there. But this second cinematic, uh, when I recorded it, I want, right as the ball goes into the net right before the explosion the frame literally the frame before the explosion so right here i'm going to cut off the clip and then i'm going to have the goal explosion clip begin as soon as you see the explosion so right when the explosion animation starts the very first frame i'm going to want it to start to start right there so it'll be going faster in after effects but this is what it'll look like That way, as soon as the beat drops in the song, when you want to sync up your clips to your song, right when the beat drops, or when a beat hits, this is one of the things you can sync up to the music is a goal explosion. So it'll go boom, whatever, whenever the beat actually drops. So now what I'm gonna do is, if you're in Adobe, this is how you do it. Um, again, if you're just in one video editor, you can just find a way to speed up your clips. But this is what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna select all of my clips, right click, uh, replace with After Effects composition and After Effects will now load. So now I am in After Effects and I'm gonna show you time remapping. Now, you don't have to do time remapping. It does help and make your montage look a little more professional, but if you don't have access to what I'm about to show you, don't worry about it. You can still try to, you can still replicate this effect if you just shorten the clip to make it faster or expand the clip to make it slower. It's not gonna look as good, but you can still do it. So real quick for my After Effects users, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to do this. You're going to uh, click on your first clip and you're going to go up to layer, time, and enable time remapping. Now this will, on this first clip, it will put down uh, a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to highlight both of these and you're going to hit F9 on your keyboard and you're going to hit this graph editor. Now this graph editor will make this little line right here. This is a time remapping line. And if you click on one of these points right here, uh, it will pull up these yellow lines and you use these yellow lines to manipulate the time. So what you want to do is you want to, uh, you can do the time remapping any way you see fit. Uh, essentially what this is, is the white line is what you're manipulating and the, the steeper that the white line is, the faster the clip will go and the more horizontal like up here the clip gets, the slower the clip will play. So you can just kind of like grab and mess around with these, um, mess around with these yellow things. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that for this clip and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I went ahead and did the second clip, time remapping, and I uh, changed the first one up a little bit. So here's what it looks like.
All right, so what you would also want to do is you'd also want to sync up everything to the music as best as you can. So any kind of hit or explosion or anything that you can sync up to music, try your best to do it. Even like even the changing of clips can be synced up. So like right here, where this transitions into the goal explosion, I'd probably have a beat drop right there. And if I wanted to add any other effects to it, you could always go to your effects and presets and uh, use any of the effects that you have. Uh, you can get really creative with this. It's really to make it your own style, make it look as cool as you possibly can. Thank you all for watching and I really hope you took something out of this. Don't forget, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more stuff like this in the future. I'll be doing a lot more tutorials and a lot more other uh, there's other content, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> also go follow my socials down below if you want to. I would love to see your montages. So, at me or DM me your montages. I'd love to take a look at them and see what you're able to do. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.